Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. When Edgar Wright directs a film, we can expect, among other things, no shortage of style. But what tends to make his films so compelling is his equal focus on substance. When creating Shaun of the Dead, Edgar Wright and co-writer Simon Pegg made a point of keeping one foot in reality. Even though it's a zombie film and it's kind of like a fantasy, that it's almost plausible. If a zombie epidemic did really happen in this neighborhood, this might be a quite a likely response. But how do you keep any realism in a movie full of jokes? And just get off me! Stylized shots and zombies. In the case of an Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg film, it's all about prioritizing character and the world of the story, and making sure everything else only serves to enhance those elements. So today, I want to explore how to make story elements grow from the main character, to examine why building a world based on character is so important, and how the best comedy is often a direct product of these two elements. Let's take a look at Shaun of the Dead. In his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Truby writes, In good stories, the characters come first, and the writer designs the world to be an infinitely detailed manifestation of those characters. So if character comes first, that means that everything in Shaun of the Dead must begin with Shaun. And to understand Shaun, we need to look at the three basic elements of character. Weakness, need, and desire. Shaun is designed to be a kind of everyman character. He goes to the same shop every morning, works an unfulfilling job during the day, and goes to the same pub every night. While it's a fairly comfortable life, Sean claims that he wants to get more out of it. I've got things I want to do in my life. When? But his character's weakness is his unwillingness to make the effort to change, and his need is to take responsibility, grow up, and choose to truly live his life. So if this is the main struggle of his character, how does it influence the design of the world? Returning to Truby, to create great characters, think of all your characters as part of a web in which each helps define the others. To put it another way, a character is often defined by who he is not. Sean's roommates are designed to directly reflect his own struggles. Pete represents an extreme version of Sean's need. He's ambitious, responsible, and financially successful. And Ed, Sean's best friend, represents an extreme version of his weakness, expressing no ambition or responsibility whatsoever. Pete and Ed embody the opposing ways of life that Sean is struggling with. And Sean would probably never change if everything stayed the same. So there has to be some element of the world that will force him to grow. You promised you'd stop smoking when I did. What? You promised you'd go back to the gym. What? You promised you'd try drinking red wine instead of beer. Well. You promised things would change. Sean's girlfriend Liz feels held back by Sean's complacency and eventually breaks up with him as a result. Liz's relationship with Sean serves to give him a clear external desire. In this way, all the important people in his life are designed to help express his character. But it's not just the supporting cast that should grow from the main character. In Shaun of the Dead, the story world is an expression of the protagonist. Returning once more to the anatomy of story, Truby defines the story world as a complex and detailed web in which each element has story meaning and is in some way a physical expression of the character web and especially of the hero. In Shaun of the Dead, a key element of the story world is, of course, zombies. One of the most interesting aspects of the film is how they are slowly revealed to the audience, and even more slowly to the main character. At first, we can't tell who's been affected by the virus and who's just a bored commuter. Sean is sat on a bus crowded with blank passengers. A pasty guy listens to his Walkman. An old man slowly nods off. On the street, he sees a young woman faint. It's not until the zombie outbreak has found its way into his backyard that Sean notices that something is happening. Excuse me. While the slow reveal is done largely for comedic effect, the zombies are not just a random, fun backdrop for the story. They're also a physical expression of Sean's weakness, a personification of the part of himself he needs to defeat. You could read so much into zombies of like, oh, they're us in like an automaton in the city and being a commuter, or being a lazy boyfriend, or sitting there playing the PlayStation every day, or just being on autopilot in your life. In the screenplay, Sean is even introduced as being zombie-like. 
bare feet shuffle into shot. Slowly, we pan up to see Sean, dead to the world, his face tired. He yawns. Not only does the zombie epidemic literally bring Sean face to face with his weakness, it's also the perfect catalyst to force characters into making powerful choices that they may not have made in any other situation. When Sean's stepfather, Philip, has been bitten and is about to turn, he finally confesses why he was so hard on Sean. I just wanted you to be strong, and I always loved you, Sean. There's a good boy. And later, when Sean's mom is also bitten and will become a zombie at any moment, Sean must do something he never would have done in any other context. Take responsibility and make an impossibly hard decision. Sean takes the rifle from David and points it at her. His hands shake, his eyes fill with tears, his finger tenses. I'm sorry, Mom. Zombie Barbara hisses and lunges forward. A zombie outbreak is exactly what Sean needs to grow. It's there to serve the character first and foremost. But of course, the movie isn't all drama and dramatic choices. In fact, it's a comedy. And even here, screenwriters Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright have made sure that the comedy enhances character. Comedy is largely subjective, but as with most elements of a story, it's usually best if it is used to reveal character. While Shaun of the Dead has some funny, isolated moments that teach us about the characters, the main source of humor comes from how the characters react to the story world. Purple Rain. No. Son of the Time. Definitely not. The Batman soundtrack. One of the ways Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg master this is with callback humor. A character will say or experience something early in the film which helps define them, like when Sean rounds out an already embarrassing work meeting with his pen leaking ink into his pocket. You got red on you. Which then is referenced and recontextualized by the events of the story world later on. Red on you. If you know Another example is when Sean gives Ed advice while he's playing a video game early in the film. Um, all top left. Uh huh. Say, reload? I'm on it. Um, since. Oh, my God. Thanks. Which Ed then repeats to Sean at the end of the movie when he's killing zombies. Top left! Uh, reload! I'm on it! Nice shot. But perhaps the most effective example of callback in Sean of the Dead comes about as a result of this joke. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. It's alright. No, no. I'm sorry, Sean. Sean puzzles before his expression turns to disgust. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, that's rotten! I'll stop doing it when you start laughing. I am not laughing, I'm going. It's a brief interaction early in the film that serves to illustrate the relationship, but it's brought back at the end of the film in an entirely different context. Ed has been bitten and offers to stay behind in the basement of the pub in order to help Sean and Liz escape. As Sean is hit with the gravity of losing his best friend, he apologizes to Ed for having shouted at him, to which Ed replies, I'm sorry too. It's okay. No, uh, I'm sorry, Sean. Sean puzzles before his expression turns to disgust. Oh, God, God. that's not funny. I'll stop doing it when you stop laughing. I'm not laughing. This is the culmination of everything Sean of the Dead does so well. A bit of humor that expresses character, reframed by the context of the story world, in a way that affects us emotionally. If you strip away the outer layers of the movie, it has the foundation of a simple drama about a man who needs to change his life in order to save his relationship. Add in zombies, and you have a drama slash horror film where the protagonist will die unless he finds the courage to transform the way he lives his life. And finally, add comedy into the mix and you have a zom rom com where the humor, characters, and story world all emerge organically from the hero of Shaun of the Dead. In reality, the imminent zombie invasion is no laughing matter. And if you're looking to learn skills that will help you rebuild society after surviving the zombie apocalypse, you should check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in filmmaking, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. 
I've recently been trying to learn more about studio portrait photography and have found Justin Bridges' class on photography essentials really helpful. He goes over all the basic lighting setups most commonly used when doing portrait photography in a way that is simple and clear. So if you want to start learning some new skills, head over to Skillshare using the link in the description below to get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to follow me as I do various creative experiments, like try to learn more about photography, you can check out my Instagram at MichaelTuckerLA. Thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon and supporters here on YouTube for making this channel possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.